Okay, everybody, welcome back. Unit three, okay, national income and price determination. That's the name of the unit. Uh, we're on multipliers, okay, I'm, once again, I'm focusing on this S aspect, but there's actually two multipliers in this unit. Okay, what are those two multipliers? One is the spending multiplier. That's tested the most, okay? There's another one called the tax multiplier, okay? And this video is focused on that one, kind of. Um, here's the thing, guys. Um, you can use the tax multiplier, and I'm going to show you the tax multiplier, I'm going to show you the formula, I'm going to show you how you can use it in this video. But the main thing that I'm going to be teaching in this video is how you can handle changes in taxes and transfer payments still using the spending multiplier, okay? So, you can just use the spending multiplier to handle changes in taxes and transfer payments. In fact, that is my recommended way of handling changes in transfer payments and taxes to find out their impact on the economy is using the spending multiplier. And that's what I'm gonna do first. At the end of the video, I will show you the tax multiplier, the formula, and I will show you, it will give you the same answer, okay? So let's get going with this, all right? So we're gonna do a tax change, okay? We're gonna do this is fiscal policy. We're gonna act like we're in a recession, so we're gonna reduce taxes, okay? So here's the deal. We've got personal income flowing into households, from personal income, households have to pay some taxes, personal income tax. The remainder flows to disposable income, okay? So when we decrease taxes, more of this personal income is going to flow to disposable income. Reducing taxes increases disposable income by the amount the taxes are reduced. I hope that makes sense. I think that's one of the big key things here, okay? So let's imagine that we reduce taxes by $100 billion. That would mean... A hundred billion more of personal income is going to flow into disposable income. So disposable income is going to change by one hundred billion dollars in a positive direction. It's going to go up. Why is it going up? Because we reduced, okay, we decreased taxes by one hundred billion, by one hundred billion. So I hope that just makes sense. We reduce taxes by hundred billion, disposable income is going to go up by that full hundred billion. The key is we're going to use the spending multiplier. We want to find out what is our initial change in spending. That's the key. So where does spending happen? Spending happen. It happens in the product market, okay? So this $100 billion, some percentage of it will flow to savings, right? Some households will simply save some of that money. Let's say that the MPS is 0.2, all right? With an MPS of 0.2, 20 percent of that 100 billion is going to flow to the financial market leaving only 80 billion to flow to the product market so spending that's where spending takes place is going to change initially all right change initially by 80 billion what i basically did is i took the tax change or change in disposable income and i multiplied it by the mpc to find my initial change in spending so my my Initial change initially, $80 billion. I know that's a little bit weird. This is all I'm trying to say here is my initial change in spending was $80 billion. Now that I know that, I can use my spending multiplier. What's my spending multiplier? Well, the formula for it is 1 over the NPS, okay? 1 over the NPS. Sometimes what I say about this formula to make sure that we can kind of hold on to it long term is it is the inverse of the thing that is that gives us our leakage away from spending, okay? So the NPS, if it gets bigger, it hurts our spending multiplier. If it gets smaller, okay, our spending multiplier gets bigger. This is the thing that hurts our spending multiplier. So if we take the inverse of that leakage away from spending, that's our spending multiplier. Hope that makes sense. That's supposed to get it so you can kind of hold on to this kind of longer term. So 1 over NPS, NPS is 0.2, which gives us 1 over 0.2, which of course, 0.2 goes into 1 five times, so that gives us 5, and so that's the spending multiplier, it is 5. I like to think of that as a ratio, so I'm going to put 5 over 1, right? 5 over 1 is 5, so that's just a ratio. What's the 1? It's saying for every $1 initial change in spending, our impact on the economy is going to be $5, okay? For every $1 initial change in spending, we're going to get $5 more in spending. So what was our initial change of spending? It was 80 billion. So let's treat this, okay, we'll put a little break right here. Let's treat this as a proportion. We know that spending changed initially by $80 billion, okay? 
So all we now have to do is solve this. And if we solve this, what are we going to get? We're going to get $400 billion. So there's our answer. What is our answer? If we were to reduce taxes by $100 billion, knowing that the NPS is 0.2 and the NPC, let me go ahead and write it in here, NPC is 0.8, remember adding those together gets you one, okay? Knowing this, the impact on the economy is going to be $400 billion. What we just did is handled a change in taxes using the spending multiplier. We didn't even use the tax multiplier at all. So, I told you I'd also teach you the tax multipliers. The thing I don't like a whole lot because it's just another formula to memorize, and I'm not a big fan of memorizing formulas. What is the formula for the tax multiplier? It is a negative MPC over MPS. Okay, it's a negative MPC over MTS. Once again, don't love that formula. I, there's no way that I can teach you that really can make you hold on to that. But anyhow, that's what it is. So what does that equal? That equals a negative 0.8 over 2, and if, or over 0.2, sorry about that. And if you do the math, of course, that equals 4, all right? So what it's saying is you can just take this tax change. It was a, oh, sorry, it's a negative 4, right? It's a negative 4. It was a decrease in taxes by $100 billion. So you say, okay, taxes decreased by $100 billion, so that's a negative $100 billion. I can multiply that by my negative 4, and the 100, negative 100 billion times a negative 4 gets me $400 billion impact on the economy. You can do it that way. I can say, hey, look, you get a tax change, you know DI is changing by the same amount, multiply the change in DI by the MPC, and that should make sense, okay? Households are not going to spend all of their change in disposable income. They're going to save some of it. It should make sense. Find out your initial change in spending that's taking place right there, and then just use your old spending multiplier. So, this 3.2 portion of the course guide, I think we could just call it the multiplier and get rid of that S, okay? The only multiplier you really need to know is the spending multiplier, as long as you know how to handle taxes and transfer payments. Oh, and by the way, how do you handle transfer payments? Well, if we were to increase transfer payments by $100 billion, Guess what? DI would go up by $100 billion. You would take that $100 billion times the MPC, find out your initial change of spending, which is $80 billion, and guess so what? The impact on the economy would be $400 billion. Once again, I hope that made sense to you. See you in the next video.